Hey everyone, I have been experimenting with Phoenix Force for pretty much the whole season and this is the list that I have come up with. Basic strategy of the deck is we want to be playing a Human Torch or a Dagger early on turns one and two. We're then going to be destroying the Dagger with our Carnage, our Venom, or our Deathlock. We're going to be dropping a Phoenix Force on turn four. We're going to move that Phoenix Force around to give it some power and then hopefully copy it with a Taskmaster on turn six. By doing just this basic strategy, we're going to be getting close to about 30 on each lane and that's probably good enough to win a lot of games. Now, of course, if our strategy does not pan out, the other things that we can do with this deck is we have a Shuri package, Shuri, then go into a Red Skull and then copy it with Taskmaster. Sometimes we can even do things like a She-Hulk and a Taskmaster on turn six in our Shuri lane. Regardless, we're going tall with this deck. Armor is going to help us protect our Phoenix Force if it copies a Human Torch. That way it's safe from cards like Killmonger. We have an America Chavez as well in this deck. Sometimes it is okay to play a nine drop on turn six. That does help us go tall. However, America Chavez is mostly in this deck so that I have a higher chance of drawing our combo pieces in the early turns, which is exactly what we want to be doing with this deck. You might notice that we do not play multiple man. Multiple man is good. However, it is much better in a move strategy deck. This is not really a move strategy. We are moving with cards like Dagger and Human Torch attached to our Phoenix Force. However, we are trying to go tall. I found that when I used multiple man in this deck list, it didn't quite work out as well. So we took it out and we opted for more of the tall package. So far, we're off to a great start. We drew a Human Torch. We have a Deathlock to kill it on turn three. And then we have our Phoenix Force to drop down on turn four and move around. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop Human Torch. I'm going to drop it into this lane because I know that this lane is safe so far. I know I'm dropping into the other lanes. I might be um, ruining my chances of winning if I'm dropping into a blind lane here. So uh, Dagger, again, we're not going to be destroying our Dagger this game, but I don't mind dropping it for some power. So maybe I'll just drop it. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll drop it here just in case. Um, if this is a location that is locked, we're going to be moving with Phoenix Force, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm going to drop Dagger here in case this becomes like one of those locations where um, the least amount of power wins. So that's really the only thing I can think of that's going to screw us up here. Um, we got hit with a spider hand, which actually benefits us because now it removes the downside of Red Skull. So I'm going to go ahead and drop uh, Deathlock here because that's going to... Actually, it's the same amount of power. Um, yeah, I'll just drop Deathlock because dropping a Venom later uh, is not losing power, whereas Deathlock, if the lanes are full, I, I might be killing some guys I don't want to. Uh, we're most likely not even going to be playing Venom, but just in case, that was just the thought process there. So we're going to be getting a summon turn, which is perfect because now Phoenix Force is going to be even larger because we get an extra turn to move. Typically, if we drop it on turn four, we get to move it on turns five and six. Now we're going to be moving it on turn seven. We hit our Taskmaster. I actually don't want to be playing anything after I drop my Phoenix Force. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double, double, double. It's going to become massive. We're going to drop a Taskmaster. And maybe we'll even be able to drop a She-Hulk at the end of the game if we draw it. So let's go ahead and just drop our Phoenix Force here. It's going to be moving around now. So it became Human Torch. The only card I'm really worried about right now is obviously uh, Shang-Chi if he manages to snipe it or a uh, Killmonger. But it looks like, okay, they're playing a Cerebro deck. It's a, also a Cerebro 2. So I'm probably not going to be seeing Killmonger. I'm not too worried about that anymore. I'm just going to start moving around my Human Torch and that's about it. The last thing we can do on turn seven now with this hand is also drop Taskmaster then Armor so that'll protect our uh, one of our lanes. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass. Now, the other thing that I, I am actually worried about against Cerebro decks is Cerebro decks also play Storm. They could potentially drop a Storm here on Limbo and end the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I know I said I would be dropping Taskmaster on turn seven, but just to avoid that possibility, I'm going to move my Human Torch and then drop my Taskmaster. That way, if they do drop a Storm, we're going to be winning. And if they don't drop a Storm, we're going to be 36 on uh, a Taskmaster and Human Torch. So that's probably good enough to win anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So they played a Mystique. They played Baku, the king, of course. Blue Cage, and oh, okay, <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I, I thought for sure I made the read, but that's fine. We're still going to be able to win uh, with 36. 36 is extremely strong. Uh, Cerebro 2 can very rarely beat 36. They have to be on like Onslaught Citadel or something like that. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move Human Torch here just in case he tries to do anything to my Human Torch. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll also drop, I'm going to drop armor here 
Uh, I mean, I don't think they play... They, they definitely don't play Shang-Chi, right? So I'm going to drop armor here, and then I'll also follow it up with maybe the pig version of Red Skull here. That should be enough to win. So let's go ahead and do that. And our opponent retreated. Um, of course, there's nothing that they could have done. Human Torch, Carnage, love to see it. <laughs> Hate to see this because I'm not going to be playing cards onto it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop my Human Torch and then I'm going to Carnage next turn. And that gives us uh, three turns to draw Phoenix Force. Great. We're going to be dropping uh, Carnage on Pet Mansion anyway. That's the only lane we could play on. I have a Deathlock for next turn, so I could Deathlock in probably the right lane. And then I'm, I'm going to have to hope to hit a Phoenix Force. Again, if I don't hit Phoenix Force... Wow, an armor. That's actually perfect for me. I I, I play armor myself, so this will ensure we our guys are protected. Uh, we're going to get Tinker's Workshop to get that one extra energy. And we hit a Shuri. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Shuri. So actually, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Shuri into this lane. So if I draw Phoenix Force next turn, my Phoenix Force is huge. I'm just going to be moving around and... Uh, making our guy even bigger. If I don't draw Phoenix Force, I can actually just pass and then play Red Skull on turn five and then just play out my regular strategy of going tall. So let's go ahead and do that. Our opponent is also playing Shuri, so things are about to get massive here. So like I said, I'm not going to be playing anything here. I'm just going to pass my turn. Let's see if our, our opponent's going to do the same. I'm expecting our opponent to also drop a Red Skull. Let's see if that's what they do. We're going to drop a Red Skull here. Next turn, we're not going to be getting Taskmaster, though. That's unfortunate because we're going to be drawing our America Chavez. So um, I'm going to probably play the Chavez or She-Hulk. I could also split my power. I could do like a Deathlock and an Armor. Um, if I'm expecting that my opponent is going to be playing a Taskmaster. I'm assuming if they drop a Red Skull here, uh, we are going to be up by one because our Carnage is bigger than their armor by one. Otherwise, we're going to be mirroring each other in power. So let's go ahead and see what our opponent does. If they don't drop a Red Skull, okay, I don't think that's a Red Skull. That's probably a She-Hulk and something. Yeah, She-Hulk. So 20... Uh, okay, Lizard and Zero. So they're losing on this lane. They're going to have to play something to beat us there. Um, what I am going to do is I'm probably going to play a She-Hulk into this lane. Yeah, okay, our opponent retreated. Because that, that leaves them with very few options that they can do here. So they could play maybe something to surpass us on this lane. Um, which I guess they very well could. Red Skull is going to give it to you. But I mean, regardless, they retreated. They probably didn't have anything. But I think our best play was to play on that lane and hope that they think they already won the Lizard lane. We didn't draw We didn't draw too many of our Phoenix Force pieces, but we did draw a Shuri and a Red Skull. So we're going to try and go tall here. I'm going to hope my opponent does not have a... Okay, that's great. Uh, we just... They, they took away one of our combo pieces for Phoenix Force, but that's fine. I, I, I We do... Oh, wow, a Nexus. Okay, that's definitely going to uh, come in handy here. And an armor. I don't think we're losing this. We're going to go ahead and drop armor on the Nexus. That way it's going to protect our tall guys. We're going to drop a Shuri. I hope that they don't have Cosmo. That's uh, That would be pretty unfortunate if they do. But we're not dropping Shuri this turn. So uh, what I think what I'll do is I'll play my white... I'll play my Human Torch on the White Hot Room. Sentinel and Iceman. I think this could be probably like a Devil Dinosaur deck. Those are pretty stalking Devil Dinosaur. At least the classic variants of it. Another Sentinel... And a Korg. So I'm, yeah, this is definitely probably a Dark Hawk Devil Dinosaur type deck. I don't think they play Legion, so I'm not going to be too worried about them Legioning one of these locations to get rid of the Nexus. I mean, if they do, uh, they probably deserve to win because that's a spicy play. But I'm going to go ahead and just execute the Shuri strategy. We're going to go ahead Shuri into Red Skull into Taskmaster in the same lane. That way, we're going to spread all that power to the other lanes so that even if my opponent is getting boosted here with a Red Skull, uh, hopefully we'll win the other location. So let's go ahead and drop the Red Skull. This is going to be 28. Pretty massive. Effectively, it's 20 if they fill out the lane because I'm bumping them by two. Our opponent is going to add the She-Hulk to his hand. Great. Don't care too much. Okay, and they retreated. So 
They knew what was coming down. I think even with uh, She-Hulk without the Taskmaster, that probably still would have been enough. A Nova doesn't tell us much. Could be a Sarah Surfer. That, that's usually an, a, a pretty solid guess. Uh, we're not going to be hitting combo here at all. I think what I'll do is I'll just drop my Carnage here just to gain some power. We're definitely not going to be needing Carnage later on, so might as well just use it now just to curve out. I am then going to probably just drop a Deathlock here. We're going to be going Shura. I was going to say into this lane, because then we can Skull and protect ourselves from uh, Shang-Chi. However, I guess we don't need to rush and play it out. I drew a Phoenix Force, which doesn't really do all that much for me right now. But I think what I'll do is I'll play... Uh, what are they playing? This could be a destroy deck maybe. Yeah, this is... I'm going to guess this is a destroy deck. They could... They play magic because they want to probably null than Zola. That's the strategy. So they're going to null here. So I think I just need to win this lane and this lane. Okay, let's do that. You know, play Shuri. Obviously, just gonna drop the Red Skull. Nimrod. Okay. Even less worried. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid of like. I'm gonna pass here because we're gonna wanna She Hulk on turn seven. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid of the Null, usually, because Null could get quite large, especially if they destroy a lot of cards, but I guess they're going for Nimrod's strategy. Um, yeah, now they're going to destroy it. So Nimrod's going to be going here and here. I wonder, do they play Destroyer, maybe? Let me think here. Uh, okay, Wolverine went there. Nimrod went there. And I don't think we're going to be losing in the center here. Uh, so I think... It's safe to just go like this and like this. So let's go ahead and see if that's enough. Sometimes it's not because they could just go so tall as well. So that's why some of these destroy decks get pretty scary to play against. But we'll see. Definitely not losing in mid. Okay, so car wow. Okay, that's good. Uh, I, I can't do the math right now. I have to see a play out. <laughs> but that is, uh, it's going to be pretty big. I'm just hoping the Wolverine lands somewhere else. So one of the Nimrods was full on location. So, okay, I think we're okay. Yeah, no, Wolverine went into the lane. Great. See, that was enough to win. But this is exactly what I was talking about. These death decks are kind of scary sometimes because they could combo out as well. It's almost like a combo deck and they actually do have the ability to go extremely tall, especially if they get favorable locations and if they destroy early enough. And then a lot of times what I like to do with my my, my destroy deck is I like to Zola my Null. That way it doubles its power into two locations. We drew Dagger, we drew Venom. And if we draw a Shuri, I guess we could potentially have the armor play. But it all depends on our next two draws. We can either combo with Phoenix Force or we could shift to a tall strategy, which is what the deck is built to do. Uh, we're definitely not going to be playing on Oscorp because all of our cards are pretty solid. Nothing that I want to give my opponent. We don't play cards like Electra or anything like that. Uh, our opponent plays a Nova. Could be like a Sarah Control. Could be... Um, oh, wow. This is... Uh, um, okay, hold on. This could This could suck, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Dagger here. That way, whatever we drop here, I'm not too worried. We still will have at least one of our kill cards to kill the Dagger. If I drop Armor, She-Hulk, that's fine. I definitely don't want to drop Dagger here in case Armor falls by accident. That way, it prevents us killing our Dagger. But it will stop him from destroying his Nova if Armor falls. So not bad. And Wolverine. Okay, well, Armor's definitely going there now. Oh, wow. There we go. Sakaar hit Armor. Perfect. I think uh, our opponent's probably just going to leave now. Yeah, I mean, that sucks for, for our opponent. <laughs> yeah, destroy duck. Okay. Um, we hit our combo. I hope they stay in. I really want to show you guys the combo here. So let's go ahead and kill our dagger. So we hit dagger instead of human torch. Now, ideally, I would be like to hit human torch however against the destroy deck hitting dagger is not bad because they can't kill monger the dagger whereas they can kill okay uh well leech is gonna turn off all the effects on turn six which is fine we're gonna hit our phoenix force now uh i'm also gonna probably drop human torch here just to curve out 
and uh, Psylocke gave us extra mana, so we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So we're going to be moving Dagger here just to boost it. Wow. Okay. Our opponent turned off our armor. However, <laughs> they still can't. I mean, I guess they could kill Monger now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, drop Dagger here. I still could draw Taskmaster. No, I can't because my last card is actually American Chavez. Okay, so I do, I, I do want to play out my hand here. Uh, I think I just go like this just to kind of get some power. And then next turn, we're going to drop a She-Hulk or a Chavez on a lane and then move our dagger to another lane. And that should be enough to win. Again, they weren't able to destroy their cards, so I don't suspect death is coming down unless they play something now that can reduce her cost to six, but I don't think that's going to be coming down. So we have a Deadpool and a Killmonger. Okay, so it's a good thing we didn't... Um, have a human torch as our starter, but a dagger instead. And this is why I have the dagger as well. So the dagger does still help us um, live <laughs> when we get hit by a killmonger. So I am probably gonna move this here and I'll drop a She-Hulk here. And I think that should be enough to win. We'll see, it, it depends what they play, but this should be enough to win. Um, we're going to be losing in mid, which is okay. So they play a Venom. Their Wolverine is going to be hitting a lane. Oh, back to the lane I wanted in. That's great. It's always, it's always good. And Deadpool. So even if they're, even if their Wolverine went into expansion, uh, we still would have won that, which is great because we were ahead there by seven. But basically this is this is, this is is how um, some of our matches play out, right? We don't hit all full combo. Like we didn't hit a Taskmaster to bump our, our um, Phoenix Force uh, to 17. However, you know, because we play cards like She-Hulk and America Chavez, uh, we can still go pretty tall within two lanes. 22 and 15 is not that bad, especially if we're playing smart. And uh, this is also a reason why I think Dagger is good in this deck alongside Human Torch because of cards like Killmonger. That is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time.